It's a project a decade and a half in the making. Now the ACT's light rail network is ready to make its debut. This weekend, as many as 30,000 people are expected along the Gungahlin to Civic Line to witness transport history and try out the trams. The journey to light rail has been bumpy, but Wind News has followed it every step of the way. The light rail build has been as ambitious as it's been contentious. Many doubted it would ever happen. There's been a lot of community debate over a long time, but we committed to this project and we have delivered this project. A tram link was first floated as an idea in 1995, but it wasn't until the 2012 election momentum picked up. Now's the right time to put our money where our mouth is. Countless studies, motions and debates would finally translate into early decisions designs and planning. The project continued to be a political plaything, even despite Labor turning first sod prior to the 2016 ACT poll, the issue remained red hot. They've made it more difficult, they've made it more expensive, but the truth is this is a bad project. The entire campaign uh, is really characterised by a positive vision uh, versus a negative short term. Uh, oppositionist approach. Canberrans had made their minds up. We can confidently say that Canberra has voted for light rail. Yeah! Canberra's gateway quickly transformed from being a tree-lined boulevard to a full-blown construction site. Once the politicians supported light rail, I think it was inevitable that we'd get it delivered. First tracks on the Civic to Gungarland line were laid by October 2017. Later, the vehicles arrived, drivers were hired and trained, and testing began. 1,200 trees were returned to the cityscape, the project appeared to be largely on track. A very high level uh, of rigour went into designing the project, procuring the project, providing governance to the project, engaging with the community. Transport Minister Megan Fitzharris believes the ACT's light rail build avoided the scandals being faced in the construction of Sydney's network. It can go very bad and have a really significant impact on the community, and significant impact on businesses uh, and significant impact on movement around the city. The Territory's own project hasn't been without scandal. Businesses along the route voiced anger over lost trade as works ramped up. Roadworks and intersection closures caused frustration among motorists, smaller deadlines blew out and the launch date was eventually pushed back. In recent months, we've had our first tram accident and several near misses caught on camera. The Greens, who were one of the driving forces behind light rail, believe the investment will soon pay dividends with reduced congestion and reliance on cars. People change their travel patterns, they take up new options of walking and cycling to stops, they'll move closer to the area. All these sort of things will drive an increase in public transport patronage. Some even predict that the Libs will stop opposing the infrastructure rollout as the focus moves to stage two. I wouldn't be surprised if the Canberra Liberals said at the next election they were the best people able to deliver future stages of light rail. The first public services will start tomorrow with major celebrations planned around Alinga Street and in the Gungarland Town Centre. We are expecting potentially tens of thousands of Canberrans to join us uh, so please plan your day. Um, expect that there might be some cues. Michael Hammond, Win News. For more details about that light rail launch event and information on road closures, visit the Win News Canberra Facebook page.